One of the two main loading conditions on a disc brake is shearing. This is due to the surface of the rotor coming in contact with the surface of the brake pad, as indicated, where the rotor is rotating about the axle and the brake pad is fixed. The magnitude of shear stress in an FSAE disc brake is large in magnitude, which will increase the temperature of whichever surface slash bodies are involved, in this case, the rotor and brake pads. After conducting research on average FSAE top speeds, we found that vehicles usually do not go over 97 km per hour. So with that velocity and a rotor diameter of 10 inches, which we have here, the rotor would be rotating at around 2,026 rotations per minute, creating a, a considerable amount of heat. How our design handles this is later explained. Our second loading condition is torsional loading of the brake disc. As seen in the diagram, the torque is exerted about the central axis of the disc, which is in and out of the page. This torque is due to the brake pad squeezing the disc while the wheels are in motion, causing them to stop or slow. This force is important to analyze because it is a possible cause of failure in the system. Failure could occur in the tabs where the bolts would fasten to the wheel, or if the pattern is not well designed, the disc may fail at any of the cooling holes due to the stress caused within the disc. This picture here represents the final design of the disc brake and on the right is a snapshot of a thermal analysis. The final design is consists of a rotor that is based on a kangaroo pod design, a caliper, a brake pad, and a piston. The material is made out of AISI 1020 carbon steel with a yield strength of 294.74 MPa, an ultimate strength of 394 MPa, and a modulus of elasticity of 200 GPa. Adding more holes in this disc will allow more airflow, thus heat generation will less likely to occur. The final design quantifies and meets the design objective and will be focusing on optimizing the deflection, weight, heat, and strength. When handling loading conditions, static loading, cyclical loading, and thermal analysis must be considered. Since the material we chose is AISI 1020 carbon steel, this material has a melting point of 1515 degrees Celsius and it can withstand heat generation, thus avoiding deformation and melting. Since AASI 1020 carbon steel is a ductile material, it will have a tendency to hold the deformation. Factor safety is an important in the engineering design. Therefore, using the Maximum Shear Stress Theory or MSS Theory, we can find the factor safety of the disc brake. For cyclical loading, fatigue analysis must be considered in this design. If the finite life is predicted, it will have a cycle between 10 to the power of 3 and 10 to the power of 6, as shown in the SN diagram for steel. Since the material is AASI 1020 carbon steel, we can use a modified Goodman criterion to predict a finite life that will have between 10 to the power of 3 and 10 to the power of 6 cycles. Through fatigue simulation analysis in SOLIDWORKS, it will less likely to be damaged while under reasonable, reasonable amount of repeti repetitive use.